Hello, my name is Kirioth, and today we are going to talk about the fact that you're probably not going to get that battle force that you wanted. So the time has come for another ramble. It's probably going to be a little bit shorter this week, though, because this one, there's not a huge amount that we haven't already seen, and one of the things that we're going to talk about tomorrow is also included in this article. So essentially, next weekend, it's all about battle forces. The Christmas battle forces will go up for pre-order, you'll be able to jump in and not get the one that you want most likely because, well, it looks like supply is once again an issue. I know that Alchemist Workshops on Twitter said that they've only been able to get four of each box. They have reached out to Games Workshop to try and get more, but they originally wanted like 60 to 100 and they're getting four of each. That suggests that, once again, the number that is available to the customers is significantly less than anyone actually wants, because these things tend to go pretty damn quick. It's not like Battle Forces hang around forever, although I did notice, in my local game store, they had the uh, the Barak Val Caradron fleet still in stock, which... Mad. I'll see if they've still got it, and if they have, I'll I'll put a post up on Twitter, because I was like, what the hell is this doing here? I know that people wanted this, and it went really quickly mild tangent. Anyway, so we may as well take a quick look. Let's remind ourselves what the battle forces are. So we've got the Space Marines one, which is the Shieldbreaker Strike Force. Death Guard with the Plague Fester Warband. Necrons with the World Scour Legion. Orcs with the Kildaka Warband. Sisters of Battle with the Purgatos Mission. And Admech with the Omnissia's Talon. Omnissia? Omnissia? I, I always get that wrong. Whatever. Words are hard. Age of Sigmar wise, we've got the Soul Black Gravelords with the Revenant Legion. Dear God, that's a lot of zombies and skeletons to paint. Oh, wow. We have the Head Knights of Slanesh with the Sybarite Blade Carnival. Luminath Realm Lords with the Venari Shining Host. And the Ossiarch Bone Reapers with the Mortison Tithe Echelon, which, to be honest, just uh, that's just a nonsense. That's just a nonsense sentence. Let's let's be real. So those are the boxes. We're going to go over the iOS ones tomorrow. We still got a few days before the pre-order goes up, so it's fine. And the issue is not the fact that these exist, because the fact that they exist isn't a problem necessarily. It's the fact that once again, it looks like things are going to be in very very short supply. Um, I know that Alchemist Workshop has said that they've only got four of each of these boxes. They wanted between 60 and 100. They've gone back to Games Workshop to ask for more, but that's currently the situation they're in, where it's a case of supply, once again, significantly not meeting demand. And I'm assuming if it's like that for them, it'll be like that for a lot of places. I do know that there's at least two game stores that have uh, mentioned getting a lot less than they were hoping for with these, which kind of means that the whole FOMO drive for these is going to be way worse. I mean, if they've got such limited stock that a place that gets a significant chunk of pre-orders every single time is only getting four boxes, that kind of means that things are just not going as well as you might want when it comes to getting hold of these things. And it feels like it's becoming increasingly increasingly something that needs to be said ahead of each release, which is that you need to prepare for disappointment as opposed to get excited for the actual product. And getting excited for stuff is fine. You can get excited for new things, for new models, for new boxes. That's not an unhealthy thing to do. The issue is that if you get too into it and you get too excited by it and then find that it's completely unavailable within 30 seconds, that doesn't actually give you anything other than a sense of disappointment. And the problem with doing like masses of FOMO-based marketing is that disappointment is more often than not something that is felt a lot more like clearly than just getting the thing. Once you've successfully got your pre-order, you've got a week's wait before the thing arrives, and it's a case of, okay, I managed to get the thing, awesome, in a week I'll be able to start messing with it. If it goes out of stock within 30 seconds and you didn't even get the chance to try and put one in your cart, that disappointment is instant, and all of the backlash begins on that day, and then it increases the longer the week goes on. Because you have the initial thing of, oh, I didn't get the thing I wanted. Oh, look, no one got it. This is brilliant. Like, four people managed to order it. Great. What about the rest of the hundred dollars? It starts out like that. But then as soon as people start getting the box a week later, it just dredges up the fact that a bunch of people weren't able to get it in the first place. Now, of course, a company is not obligated to sell you things. Weird though that sounds. It's not like Games Workshop is legally required to make enough boxes to service the entire customer base. But, but, if you're going to rely super heavily on FOMO marketing and talking about how vital it is that you get this thing now and that you buy it now and you save so much money and look how much stuff is in this box and look how awesome it is and look how much you need it, you kind of owe it to yourselves at least to make sure that enough people get it that the 
positive reaction to the launch of something outweighs the negative reaction to the launch of something. And in my opinion, it is very much like a 50-50 split at the moment. I see just as many people getting frustrated and aggravated at not being able to get hold of these things as I do people who are happy that they managed to buy them. And it also has a knock-on effect where I've seen multiple people at this stage actively feel a bit bad about the fact that they did manage to get something because if they don't get round to it straight away they feel like they have just essentially taken it from someone else. I've seen people get really kind of frustrated at the fact that oh yeah I managed to get a cut sorry we're not allowed to say the name you can't say the name can't say the name it's not cursed city that's it's it's been struck it doesn't exist hexed hamlet as uh as, as let's make it all on twitch puts it a lot of people managed to get hexed hamlet more people didn't a huge amount of people didn't manage to get hexed hamlet and i know quite a few people personally who have still not quite got round to finishing their copy of hexed hamlet and actively don't even talk about it because they feel bad about the fact that it was set up as one thing, it was suddenly super limited, and a bunch of people didn't get it. They don't even want to mention Hexed Hamlet, because there are people who really wanted that and missed out. And of course, it's not your responsibility to double-check whether you're going to immediately finish a box when you buy it or anything like that, but it all kind of speaks to a larger issue of using that driving force of getting people really hyped and really excited and like desperate for the product, and then not making enough to actually make all of them happy they have changed that in a few different ways we have had things where you know if you've not been able to you know you've been able to buy a box but you haven't got it straight away you will get a copy of the box eventually because we may to order it at some point in the future and they have done that they have switched that around and made it so that it's a little more viable of course the window for buying that product is still super small it's like it's slightly better it's an improvement i'll say it's an improvement because instead of it being a case of okay you didn't get this in your cart fast enough, you just don't get it. Now we're at a stage where for a good number of things, they are prepared to actually do a second run or they're prepared to do a made to order, but it's still that window. The window is the same. There's no there's no change in like when you have to order it, it's just the fact that more people can order it. Which is an improvement, but it still doesn't fix the overall issue of using FOMO left, right, and center for every single thing that you put out. I mean, we did a video, like, was it last week or the week before, um, talking about the, those, like, limited forces that you could get? Which essentially were kits that you can buy separately. They're just in one box, so it's one click instead of multiple clicks to put it in your cart. There's no saving, there's nothing special, there's nothing different about it. They're still doing that, and that line is still in there. Apparently they really want me to tap the sign again, the stop it sign, because they're still doing it, and they're still saying, order yours today to avoid missing out. That is just the motto of Games Workshop as a whole now. You've got to get it now. Don't miss out. You cannot miss out on this, even though this is nothing special, even though this is nothing different. They are, as Discourse put it, uh, Discourse Miniatures said on Twitter that she was, she thinks that they just don't even know how to write limited availability on the website without resorting to FOMO marketing techniques and I'm inclined to agree actually <laughs> I really am inclined to agree and the thing is these will be really popular these battle forces they will sell out almost instantly the amount of like boxes they've made will be nowhere near enough if you are sitting there and you're like I am I'm basing my entire ability to start a new army on one of these boxes I would suggest that you start putting together other methods. I would suggest that you start looking at other things. If you've got a project that perhaps you got started with and never got around to finishing, maybe look at that as a backup to not getting one of these boxes. If you want to go and start browsing eBay now for, you know, the occasional treasure trove of forgotten items where people go, oh, I bought this like eight years ago and did nothing with it. Maybe now's the time to start doing that. Maybe now's the time to just build up a plan for working out what you want out of these boxes and deciding in what order you would buy them separately from a third party at a discount um, if you do not get hold of one of these. Because really, the overall message now, and I feel like this is something that I'm trying to increasingly do when it comes to each of these boxes, unless you have that kind of made-to-order status applied to it as well. When it comes to boxes now, every single one of them, it needs to come with a disclaimer. It needs to come with the disclaimer that... You can't let yourself get too attached to this before it actually shows up because you probably won't get hold of it. I'm making a conscious effort to do that 
more. I'm aware that by talking about it, you know, like interest and hype is generated. I'm aware that by breaking down what's in the boxes and by us discussing what we do and don't like, that builds up excitement and it builds up people looking forward to it. But at the same time, the supply issues and the willingness to oversell and underproduce, whether it be intentional or by accident, um, it just means that now I feel like, especially recently, the effort has to be made to point out pretty much every single time that what you see, there's a good chance that you won't be able to get it. If you actually did manage to buy it, then what you got in the box would be what was on the box. But in terms of like the marketing for these things, they suggest they suggest a level of a level of excitement and enjoyment and a level of uh, looking forward to something that they can't actually deliver and most likely will never be able to deliver. And I think the more we kind of hammer that home, the better it is for everyone. It's a case of like still look forward to it, but don't pin everything on it. Still still like be at least mildly hopeful that you might be able to get hold of one, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. I think more than anything, tempering expectations when it comes to anything limited that Games Workshop do at this point should be the default state. It should you should go into everything with tempered expectations, if not assuming that you probably won't get the thing that you want to get, much though you would like to. That was even more rambling than I thought it would be, but I hope you got the idea. <laughs> probably not. Who knows? We'll find out. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you not that fussed about the boxes? Are you really looking forward to one? Do you have a plan to try and acquire one? I mean, not like theft or anything, something illegal, obviously. Um, let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't click it if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you would like. There's also an affiliate link for Noble Knight Games in the US. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.